Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for our final kitchen gadget class here with The Giant Company. My name is Jenna Wood, and I am one of the dietitians here. Very excited to talk about pressure cookers, Instant Pots, you know, is a brand of that. So clear up some miscommunication about it, maybe some fears, because I see that in the chat, um, and just learn about ways you can use it that maybe you never even thought about. So our agenda today, we're going to talk about the different types of pressure cookers. There are two main kinds that I'm going to cover. How they work, so why they're a little different than other types of cooking, ways to use them, and some potential benefits for using them. Some savory recipes, we have a lot. If you search pressure cooker or Instant Pot, you'll see a bunch. And then I'm gonna quickly demo the first steps of one of our recipes. I won't be able to stay on the entire time to show you start to finish, but I will email out a picture of the finished recipe. But I wanna kind of walk you through the first steps, which I think sometimes can be the scary parts. And I'll talk you through how to like release the pressure too. But these are some pictures I thought were nice to share. Sweet potatoes and hard boiled eggs are probably how I use mine the most. Hard boiled eggs come out perfectly in the pressure cooker. The peel comes right off, sometimes in one piece. It's miraculous. And sweet potatoes, if you ever try them in the Instant Pot, you will never want them another way because they make them so flavorful. And that's one of the benefits of pressure cookers is kind of the flavors get really nice and concentrated. Other things, grains, we're going to talk about all of it. Types. So there are two main types of pressure cookers out there on the market today. The first one and the most traditional, because pressure cookers are nothing new. People have been using pressure cookers to can foods for a long, long time. So the two on the left-hand side here are stove top pressure cookers. So these, you have to, you know, babysit a little bit more. You need to be a little bit more advanced. I do not own one. I have in the past and I did not love it because yeah, you need to be a little bit more technical to do these, but they also often end up being cheaper than the more high tech ones. But they're fantastic if you have, you know, I think most of them work on gas, but they could probably also work on other types of burners as well. They definitely work in the same capacity, but you know, you need to watch out a little bit more. On the right hand side, I have more of the high tech electronic versions that you plug in. So these are, this one is an Instant Pot and this is a Breville. The Breville is like a super high-end one, like very expensive. Instant Pot has become super popular over the last decade, I would say, in terms of pressure cookers. And we have so many different models with tons of different um, settings that you can use, preset things that can be really helpful. Um, they kind of tell you a lot about how to release the pressure. And just if you are just getting into the pressure cooking game, I mean, I love mine because it just, it's very user-friendly. Of course, you do want to make sure you read the directions. I'm really bad at reading directions. This is one appliance I read the entire manual because yeah, I think knowledge is power. And if you are one of those people that's kind of afraid it's going to blow up, read the manual. You will not blow up. Also, some of the higher end models have like a phone app that you can use to monitor, you know, what's going on in the pressure cooker. So, you know, you could go for a super low end model, super high end model. They're all going to work basically the same. It just kind of depends on how many bells and whistles you really want. How do they actually work, though? I mean, you can probably assume based on the actual name, they work by building up pressure. So they use high pressure and steam to cook the food inside quickly and efficiently. The sealed container, so it's sealed, the pressure starts to build, the liquid that is in there, because you always need to add an amount of liquid. The recipe will tell you, and depending on the size of your pressure cooker, you need a liquid, whether it's water, broth, other things, you need a liquid that becomes steam. And, <clears throat> The pressure in there raises the boiling point of water, which is another reason why foods cook so quickly. The cooking is faster. But I think one misconception, and one that I had for sure when I first got mine, is that, you know, it has the word instant if you are buying the Instant Pot brand. It is not instant, but it is fast compared to other methods of preparation. It cooks quickly. Again, that high temperature and the pressure can penetrate the ingredients. And especially like one of the benefits is that a really tough cut of meat or something 
gets really kind of nice and soft and moist because of the method. Um, but in terms of faster, when you're using the pressure cooker, the pressure needs to build up. So that's time you need to consider. And then you typically choose an amount of time it's gonna cook. So you have to add that. And then the pressure has to release. And there's two different kinds of pressure releases in these. There's either a natural release, which you don't do anything. You kind of just let the vent slowly release the steam and the pressure. Some recipes will say natural release for X amount of minutes. Then you're going to quick release, which is the other kind of releasing the pressure, which on my pressure cooker, there's a vent and you kind of just turn it very carefully. Mine, you have to use like a wooden spoon to kind of push it over, but there's that quick release. So it'll release the pressure much faster, but that's all time you have to account for in the recipe. So it's not instant, but it can still be very quick compared to some other methods of cooking. So hopefully that makes sense. Even cooking. So because of just the way it is cooking, the heat is distributed evenly, reducing the likelihood of, you know, parts of it not being a uniform temperature or cooked. Everything is kind of just all in the same environment. And again, I kind of mentioned with that retained moisture. So if you're cooking something you want to stay moist, like the recipe we're making today, or a thicker cup of beef or something like that, this is a great method to use because it's not gonna dry out because it is a faster cooking method and it's a sealed environment. So all that moisture stays in as opposed to evaporating into the air. Ways to use the pressure cooker. So I'm sure not any of these are shocks. Maybe some of them are. Pressure cooking. So that is what you do with it. So whether you're cooking grains, beans, I think that's a fantastic way to use the pressure cooker. You know. A bag of dried beans. I have some over there. Um, very easy method. You want to rinse them and then you cook them in here. Meats, stews, potatoes. Like I mentioned, sweet potatoes in the Instant Pot. You got to try it. A lot of methods or a lot of um, appliances you can use as a slow cooker. So if you're somebody who doesn't want 7,000 appliances, you can get rid of your slow cooker in theory if you have a model that does also slow cook sauteing. So many of the, especially the electric models will have a setting for saute because some recipes you do want to brown the meat beforehand because that's the same issue with the slow cooker is, you know, you want maybe the meat to be browned, not just, you know, cooked. So you can do the saute first and then pressure cook. Steam. There are various, you know, things you can add to this to make it a steamer basket. You can make yogurt, soups, stocks, and broths. Desserts, things like cheesecakes, uh, canning. So you can still use it in a traditional method to make can, like to can various uh, foods. One pot meals, which is kind of what we're doing today. Hard boiled eggs, again, probably my favorite use. You know, it is so easy to just cook hard boiled eggs on the stove, but in terms of the quality and removing the peel, I love my pressure cooker. Caramelizing onions, if you have that saute setting and proofing dough as well. So proofing dough, a lot of people said on um, when I was reading yogurt, use the yogurt setting to proof the dough. So lots of different methods to check. There are so many, I will get to all of our questions, I promise. So some of the benefits, I've kind of alluded to some of these, but time efficiency. Again, it's not instant like the name would claim, but it is more efficient. It's a more efficient use of time, like a slow cooker, you know, you can set and kind of forget. This is a very similar thing where you kind of throw everything in and it will cook faster than a slow cooker or trying to cook on the stove. Potential energy savings. So since it is going to cook in a shorter amount of time, as opposed to maybe cooking on the stove, or in a slow cooker, you're just going to use hopefully less energy. Nutrient retention. So just the method of cooking, the nutrients stay in there as opposed to boiling where you, know, you boil off and you pour the water out and some nutrients are in there. Uh, so nutrient retention. Improved or enhanced flavor. Again, all of that flavor is kind of being concentrated and staying in that pressure cooker. So you're not losing some of those aromatics. It can tenderize tough cuts of meat, which can be money efficient as well because tough cuts of meat tend to be a little bit cheaper and this will help tenderize it so you won't even really notice a difference. One pot cooking, everyone loves the idea of one pot cooking. This is definitely an apparatus to help with that. And one thing I like, granted it's been so cold the last couple of days, 
but reduced kitchen temperatures and odors. So cooking on the stove, at least my stove, it heats up the entire kitchen, which when it's super cold, doesn't bother me. But in the summer, you know, you don't always want to use the stove. This is a nice way. I don't always think to use my pressure cooker in the summer, but really it's not going to heat up the whole house. And in terms of odors, it's all staying relatively in here. So if you're somebody who is sensitive to a lot of odors, this can be a really good way to cook too. I took these pictures from Christine's kitchenblog.com because I wasn't sure what angle I was going to show um, my video. Oops, close this on here. Uh, but these are just some nice images for the Instant Pot brand. But you have the base unit, you have the inner pot. So that is where you're actually gonna load everything into. You have the lid. The lid has the steam valve release or release valve. Um, this one you can kind of see has uh, a little thing that turns. And the little red dot there is what shows you if it's full of pressure or if it's been dep um, you know, depressurized and if it's safe to open or not. So that's a really important thing if you're kind of afraid of using your Instant Pot. If the little nub is up, you're not going to open the lid. Once the little nub has fallen back down, it is perfectly safe to open. The pressure has been released. This one, this model has a condensation collector because, you know, you think about it, it's producing a lot of steam. My condensation collector broke off the day I bought it. So there's that. <laughs> so you don't need it, but some models don't even have it. It's nice if they do. And then there's different trivets that you either put food on, rest food on. If you're separating things, they're really helpful. Um, I bought extra things to go in there, especially for things like the hard boiled eggs. I will link to this. Oh goodness, hopefully it'll let me click out of it. Um, the Instant Pot website or whatever brand you purchase is gonna have information about how to cook various things. So if you wanna cook dried beans, it's gonna tell you what quantity, what pressure level, the amount of time, if you need to soak it, how much water, all that good stuff. So this is a clickable link that I will send you. Then on Giant's website, on our Savory magazine and on the website, we have tons of pressure cooker recipes, all Instant Pot brand, but again, you can use it in others. We have a Texas style chili, a spaghetti squash pad thai with chicken. I'm pretty sure Shana made a spaghetti squash recipe recently, but spaghetti squash is another thing I have tried in my pressure cooker. So easy and just great to use for. Uh, I considered making that one, but that recipe is a little involved so for our quick class. But the artichoke stuff with salami breadcrumbs sounded pretty good too. Uh, then we have Instant Pot walnut lentil tacos. I thought that sounded great. So again, lentils are very easy to cook in an Instant Pot. I thought this sounded fun. I was going to try to make it before our class, but a pear butter. So you kind of pressure cook all of the pears in here, break them down into a really nice butter. I'm assuming you could do this with apples as well. And then a pumpkin lentil stew, which just looks so delicious too. But the recipe I'm going to be making today, we have a big batch Instant Pot chicken burrito bowls. Very simple ingredients, and I should have kind of separated it, but the first four ingredients are what are going to go into the Instant Pot. The rest are kind of garnishes. We're going to do one and a half cups of brown rice, one and a half cups of water. Again, you want to always check your recipe or check the Instant Pot manual. Most rices are going to be a one-to-one -one ratio for the amount of fluid, because again, you need that water for the product to work properly. I'm going to do two tablespoons of a jarred sofrito. So sofrito is just kind of a base that you can use for various recipes. It's made with onions and tomatoes and peppers, and it just smells amazing. So I'm going to use that for flavor. Uh, you can even, I saw recipes to make your own homemade sofrito in the Instant Pot. So just full circle. And then I'm going to use a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I will show you how I'm going to load them into the Instant Pot. On top of that, so this is a perfect meal prepping recipe. And that's one thing I think if you want to get into meal prepping, especially for lunches, an Instant Pot can be really helpful there because for this, it's gonna make a good amount of rice and chicken. And then we're gonna separate it into bowls. You could eat it for dinner, but you could also meal prep it for the week. We're gonna top it with some black, black bean salsa. And then you could top it with other things like avocado, cheese, diced tomatoes, peppers, whatever you want. Again, I'm gonna walk you through these steps and show you. 
Everything is just going to go right in here, though. Could not be easier. And then we're just going to mix together some black beans and salsa as well. Oh, and I don't want to forget. So if you're watching the recording, my apologies. But on Friday, which is tomorrow, we're having our first of these type of classes. We're going to have a coffee chat. Tomorrow happens to be National Coffee Day. So it's a perfect day to kick this kind of class off. It is super early in the morning. So it is 7 a.m. We're just do giving it a trial run. If you like it, great. We'll take feedback. Um, but Shana and I are really excited to wake up early with you and drink a cup of coffee and talk about nutrition as it relates to coffee. So I hope you all want to join. But I do have the link here that I'll send out. I am going to stop sharing. And I'm going to, you'll be there. I'm so glad. Oh, sour cream. Of course, you're going to top it with sour cream, right? I am for sure. All right. So into our Instant Pot, I am going to switch my camera. Let's see. Or I mean, at least add a spotlight. So hopefully you can see you're usually up by five. More power to you. So I have the camera kind of switched to my Instant Pot here. I don't remember what size mine is. I want to say it's an eight quart, but I don't remember. So kind of turn the lid, lift the lid off. The lid is heavy, but the lid actually sits kind of right there, which is really nice. It kind of fits right into the slot. Typically, they'll come with things like measuring cups. This is something I purchased separately, but this is how I cook my hard boiled eggs. The eggs fit really nicely into this little contraption. I don't remember how I built it, but it goes perfectly onto there. So I cook a bunch of eggs at one time. And again, they're the best hard boiled eggs you'll ever have. Gotta try. But then this is like the trivet, which sometimes recipes will call for. You put some stuff at the bottom and then you put the trivet over it and you put other things on top because you can really kind of build a meal in here. But we actually don't need the trivet at all today. So I'm gonna move all of this extra stuff, but I keep it in there because otherwise I'm gonna lose it if it's not just stored right in there. But I'm gonna move it over here into the Instant Pot base. I am going to add the brown rice. So I have a half, one and a half cups. Now I, what is in there? I gave my brown rice a mix or a mix, a rinse. It's recommended to rinse your rice just to get some debris and dust and things off. But also in terms, especially white rice, this is brown rice, but it can help reduce some of that extra starchiness and it can help the rice not clump. So that's what we're doing. So I did half, one and a half cups of rice right in there, just a little rinse. So I measured it and then I threw it into my colander. I just give it a rinse. Then we're doing one and a half cups of water, which I measured here. So right, you, you can see the rice. Okay, so right into here. Then it calls for two tablespoons of the sofrito. I'm using Goya brand. I think we also have a frozen one because um, it is, it's all fresh ingredients. It's kind of, smells like a salsa because it has similar ingredients. It's making my mouth water. It smells so good. We can do two tablespoons. Again, it's optional, but it's really gonna help with the flavor. So, okay, got that in there. So that's it, you could, um, I don't know if it says to mix it or not. You don't really have to mix it, so I'm just not gonna. Never add extra steps if you don't have to. Then I'm gonna add the chicken right on top. So I have about one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Ooh, the smallest gloves. Okay. All right. So here are my chicken thighs. I'm gonna pop that open. And then I'm just going to place them right on top of the rice. I don't know about you, but chicken, I love chicken thighs. I prefer them to other cuts of chicken. I just think they're more flavorful. They have a little bit more iron. I just like them. If you like chicken breasts, I guarantee you could probably make this with chicken breasts. Um, I would just definitely check the temperature. Um, because you could do maybe little, like the little chicken breasts. Um, I just love these. Okay. I probably should have cut off some of that fat, but here we are. <laughs> Try to move them around. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm going to take off my gloves. I'm going to quickly wash my hands, even though I used gloves. I just raw chicken. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, they have so much more flavor. I love them, but I know a lot of people don't. So you probably could use chicken breasts as well. What we're gonna do, it says to season with salt and pepper. I am gonna add some pepper. Um, the salt, there is some salt in the sofrito. Um, I might just do a teensy, teensy bit because you can always add more salt later. Can't take it away. So I'm just gonna do a little bit. Okay, perfect. Then we are going to seal it. So lid, go back on. Come on, there we go. Kind of have to like, there's a little guide on the front that says, you know, open and closed. Uh, so then on the back, you're going to want to make sure there's one side that'll say venting, one side that'll say sealing. You want it to be on the sealing side. So that's kind of the way mine is, because that's how it's going to cook. Then, so I don't know if you can see the front of mine. Oh yeah, kind of. Uh, mine is a little confusing. Apparently there is a newer model that's much more straightforward, like it has a start button. This does not. You kind of just press the pressure cooker button and then it'll just start. You kind of wait. But so for mine, I'm going to hit pressure cook. It already says high pressure. And then I'm going to do the plus button until we get up to 20. That is it. <laughs> so you just wait. You'll hear it kind of realize that that's what you want to do. It'll start making a sound in a second. Okay. Then you kind of just wait. Once it starts, so this is it building up the pressure. Once the pressure has built up, then the timer will start counting down. It'll start beeping again once the 20 minute timer is up. This recipe says to then do a quick release. So what you're gonna do, I can't really show you since the recipe is not done, but for mine, you will then move the um, valve from sealing to venting carefully. I do it with this wooden spoon. This is why I own it, to move it and some steam will start to kind of push out of there. So you just don't want to have your face or hands or anything near that valve. But it's not too scary. Once you do it for the first time, it'll be fine. But you just kind of move the valve till the steam comes out. Then for this recipe, you'll open the Instant Pot. It should be more than cooked. You're going to shred the chicken. Um, and then you can either eat it as is for dinner or you can... Um, you know, put it into what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put it into individual prep containers. So I have meals ready to go. So I'm excited for that. So again, really easy recipe for meal prepping. Additionally, so I did grab, I'm going to kind of make a little easy salsa. I have a cup of salsa that I already poured into my mixing bowl. I'm just going to mix in, this is 15 and a half ounces, I think of our black beans. I'm going to give them a rinse and mix them together. And then I'll top the chicken because that'll add some more fiber, some more vitamins and minerals and just more flavor. So I'm going to top it with that, but I will rinse it because, well, granted, this one's no salt added, so you don't have to, but the black beans sometimes have that slimy uh, consistency on the outside. So I'm going to rinse that and make that little salsa. But that is all I have for our pressure cooker. I will send out a photo of our finished recipe, the you know, portion I eat for lunch, but I am so grateful for you coming and I'm going to check the question box for some questions, but thank you again. And hopefully I'll see you in our coffee chat.